strong connectivity. Yeah. What does it mean by strong connectivity? So each vertex can reach all other vertex. So in this case, it is not strong. Okay. This is not strong. Why? Because C is not connected to all other vertex. C only connect to A, E, and B. So if you can find the reach ability to all other vertices, then it is strong cognitive. So the strong connectivity algorithm is uh, we are going to find the bridge ability. For example, now let's pick a vertex P in G. So this is a graph G. And then we perform a DFS from V in G. So let's set up a V. If there is a W not visited, print no. So I can say something like this. From A, for example, I start from. So I can find an X to C. I can find an X to G. I can find an X to B. And then from A, I can find an X to G. I can find an X to F. I can find an X to E. Okay. So it means every of the possible, uh, all the nodes, I can find the read opening. And then, if there is a W not visited, renew. So it means every all nodes. Okay. So we already. Then we can perform the next step. Let G prime G prime be G with edges reverse. What does what does it mean by reverse? We want to find if we know that there is an X from G to A. Now let's reverse if we know there is an x from c c to g so let reverse so we want to find the reverse so if there is a reachability for every of the vertices so we can again perform the FS. And if there is a W not visited, then print no. Else print yes. So if all vertex has been visited in G, and if all vertex has been visited in G prime, okay, then it is wrong. Okay. If there is no, we need to do the reverse. And if again there is no in this step, so it is not complete. So the strong complete we need to make sure that is yes and this is okay. So the run time will be O and we will do for every of the nodes. And we can select what is the strongly connected component. Do you still remember maximum structure? 
the maximum subgraph means the vertex can reach all other vertices in the subgraph. So we do not need to create the full graph, but we can create the minimum and or we call it this is the maximal subgraph. So its vertex can reach all other vertices in the subgraph. This also can be done in O and plus M using DFS, but it is more complicated. It is similar to the by cognitivity. For example, I want to make a subgraph in T, and then I want to make a subgraph DEFB. So I want to find the strongly connected component on this tree. And I want to find the strongly connected component on T. You can find. So it is. For example, yeah, I think you know Seoul City. Seoul City, there is the, you know, so there will be the area above the hand and there will be area below the hand So you can find the strong cognitivity in hand You can find the strong cognitivity. Then you can make the algorithm with this one. There is another concept we call it transitive closure. In the transitive closure, we have a digraph G, and we want to find the transitive closure, and the digraph will be G star. So we have the digraph G, and we have the transitive closure of G. Star. Such that G star has the same vertices as G. So for example, it is G. So we have A, B, C, D, E. So the G star it has also A, B, C, D, E. If G has a directed path from U to V. Let's say u not equal to g. So g star has a direct path from u to. So if you look at this one, a to c, c to d, d to e, b to d, and b to c. Then this one is the directed. So the transitive closure provides reachability information about the diagram. What does it mean? So I want to know from A to C there is a directed X. From C to D there is a directed X. That means there is a bridge above from A to D. So D is reachable from We know there is a directed edge from A to C, from C to D, D to E. Then I know that there is a reachable from A to E. So there is a and there is a directed X from B to D, D to E. Or we can also look at from B to C, C to D, D to E. Then I can say that there is a reachable path from D to E. So I can make this is a reachable path. So this is the meaning by reachability information. And we create as a key. The transitive closure, we can compute it. 
if we perform the DFS starting at its vertex, so the performance will be n multiplied by n vertex. It means we are going to check for every of the vertex and there will be another checking and it means like this one if there is a way to get from a to b if there is a way to get from a to b and from b to c and b to c then there is a way to get from there is a way to get from A to B. Okay. So alternatively, we can use the dynamic programming, and this is the Floyd model. The idea of the Floyd model is this one. The first is we need to check the number of one, two, until n. And then consider paths that use only vertices number one until k as the intermediate vertex. Okay, what is intermediate vertex? If I want to go from A to C, let's say I can visit via B. Let's say I can visit via D, I can visit via E, for example. So this is the intermediate vertex. Okay, we call it this is the intermediate vertices. So I can go to C via B, I can go to C via B. And I can go to C via E. So those are the intermediate vertices. So we need to consider paths that use only vertices as the intermediate vertices. So we need to determine this intermediate. Then if I want to check from I to G. It means I need to find any node in K. So K is the intermediate. So we need to find the K. Is there any K? If there is a K, then we can define the transition. This is the algorithm. First, we need to know the number of vertices, P1 until Pn, and then let's compute the diagram. The diagram, we need to understand the G0 until Gn. Okay. So the G0 means it is equal to the D, or it is equal to the graph. And then Gk means it is a graph that use K as the intermediate point. So one more time. So if we have the GK, it means it is a graph okay, that use K as the intermediate Vertices. So the intermediate vertices, it will be from one until two. So we, if we have the k, it is from one until k and until n. So k it means k can be one, k can be two and so on until k equals 20. 
then we will have the graph gn so until n times it will be g star what is g star g star is the graph that is the result from the sensitive flow so this is the result from the sensitive In phase K, digraph GK is computed from GK minus two. So if K is from one comma two until n, then the GK, let's say K equals to two. So the result from this K equals to two will be based on the G1. G1 is when the k equals one the running time of this flight function takes o n it is assuming that uh, all the vertices are adjacent and the adjacent is o one if we use the adjacency matrix for adjacent uh, this is the algorithm Let me just briefly look at the code. So the input diagram is G, and then we have the output, which is transitive closure G star of G. We will start from I equals to one, and all vertices in the graph let's denote as the V I. So I is one and then the other node will be i p one p two p and so on. now let's make the g zero as we want to start k from one or from the vertice one until n now let's do the k g k equals to g k minus one so if k equals to one then the g one equals to g zero at the first time g zero with the graph the original graph so we will do again for i equals to one until n and i not to k and then for j from one until n and j not equals to i j not equals to k so we will check if the g k minus one are adjacent between v i and v k and G K minus one are adjacent between V K and V G. So I and K adjacent and K comma J. Yes. Then we can say it is free. If not, if not adjacent, then we can insert directed and it means if i j if there is no direct x from i to j so we can create the directed x i to j because of the field. so because we know k we can mix the directed And we will do this loop until we finish on the mix. Uh, this is the Python code. Yeah. I think now this there are so many codes in the GitHub and the internet. We can use that one. Now let's look at one example. This is a graph. 
So we have one, two, three, four. And you, if you look at this one, from one, there is an edge to two. From two, there is an edge to one. From one, there is an edge to four. Four to three, three to two, two to four. Now we need to determine the reach of volume. And we want to find the surface. Okay. It means we are going to look at the origin of A0 or the graph. What is the original? So the original means let K be the intermediate products in the shortest path from source to destination. So K you can determine. In this step, K is the first product. So if you want to assume that we one, then K equals to one. So the idea is this one. AIJ is filled with AIK plus AKJ if the AIJ is higher than AIK plus AKJ. Can you understand? For example, like this, I have I and then I have J. So there is a distance between I and J. But I want to know if I go from I to J via K. So let's check. If the distance from I to J is 20. And then from I to K, let's suppose it is 5. And then from K to J, suppose it is 12. Okay. The A, I, J, it is 20. A, I, K, it is 5. A K J it is twelve. So five plus one is seventeen. Is seventeen lower than twenty? Yes, because seventeen is lower than twenty. So the distance between I and J is not twenty, but it is seventeen. We can replace with the that's the meaning by the So that is if the direct instance from K from the source to the destination is greater than the path through the product, then the cell is filled with AIK plus AK. So that's the proposition. Oh, yeah, I give you an example. So let's say if using this graph, I have k equals to 1, i equals to 2, and j equals to 4. k equals to 1. And i is 2, j is 4. This is i. This is G. Now I want to know what is K? K is the intermediate vertex. K is the intermediate vertex. And then I want to know I and T. So I and T. The result is a two four 
a to four traditional is four. A to four traditional is four. Now I want to know if I go from two to four via one. So two to one. Then I need to know a to one. A to one is two. And a one four. A one four is five. Then if you look at this one. If I go directly from two to four, the distance is four. If I go from two to one, and then one to four, the distance is two plus one, which is ten. So, we can keep the shortest distance. Two, four, four. We to need to define. In this case, this is four. Four is less. Uh, four is greater than seven. Four. Then, okay. You don't need to change the term. Then we can. With this uh, condition, so we can set up the stuff. Condition is I not equal to J and not equal to K. So the first we will check if the K is one. Okay, so we have the A one. This is the graph with the K equals to one. So if the k equals to one, now we need to do the iteration. The i should not be equal to k, so we can start from here. The j not equal to i, not equal to k. Then we start from here. So if the i is two and j is three, I can look at some. A2, comma 3 is higher than A21 plus A12. A23. Okay, if you look at this one, is there any F from 2 to 3? No. Then we put A. So we put in three. Or two and two three. What about two to one? Two to one, we have two. And what about one to three? One to three, we still do not know. So we put also infinite. Okay, two plus infinite, of course, still infinite. Then the result for two three is infinite. This is for the A. Next, we can do for the next iteration. K is still the same one, but I is two and J is four. Again, you will do A to four because I is two, J is four. So I want to go from two to four. The distance from two to four is four. And then I would like to check the distance from two to one, one to four. Two plus five. Okay, we have the smaller is four. So we can keep the distance because this is false. We can keep the distance four. And then we go to the next. When k equals to one, now, because J already four, so I will increase to three, and J will start. 
from them. So we can look at the A32. A32. Okay, we know there is a distance one. And because k equals to one, so I want to know three one and one two. Three one. Three one, there is no direction. So it is infinite. And one two. One two, we have three. Because three plus infinite is infinite, we will use the shelf which is one. So this condition is still false. So we use the shelves one, three, two is one. And so, so we will do when k equals to one, because it is still one, and i is three, and j is four. And then we do when k equals one, and i is four, j is two. And again, we do the k equals to one, and i is four, and j is two. So every of this will be saved into the same. After we have this, we go to the iteration two means k equals to two. When k equals to two, so again we do for every problem. That's why if you look at the flight work done, the big O is O n power t because it is look for three variables. The worst case is n multiply by n multiply by n. That's why it is n power. Okay, you can look one step by step like this one and then after you know what is of this one you can again create the table or we call this is the matrix after this we go to the next which is k equals to three so when k equals to three so we have i equals to one j equals to two and again we have the result adjacency matrix according to this and then the last one will be k equals to four because we have one two three four so every node will be okay. and we have until this part we will have the five adjacency matrix and because this is the from every possible node that we have in this graph. Okay. okay, that's about the flight virtual. Uh, let me explain a little bit. We still have some time. Uh, I want to explain about the short path. Okay, for the short path. Um, I use the code from the outer of the book. For this one, uh, I put another. So if you go to the shortest path, there will be two more files, chapter 09 and chapter 40. So this is the code given by the author. Uh, actually, I skip the chapter 9. And I also use some part of the chapter 14. You can extract this one. Up to full view. So you can do the extraction. And yeah, inside of this there will be code. Okay, and I think that this uh, yeah. so if you have this folder, when you click this folder, it is it has another folder. So I move all of this 
Okay. I will move all of this to the pair folder. Like this one because we need to connect with the IPY. So this is for the chapter nine, and I also use the chapter fourteen. So inside the folder chapter fourteen, there are books. So you can just move this one to the pair folder. So move from the chat folder into the pen folder. So after you move this one, let's run the code. So finally move the code into the pen folder. There will be if you do not move it, then there will be. So this code was developed by Google and they use the primary key. In this case, I didn't use the hip primary key. And the other is the depth or hip primary key. So I just use the code. And the author also used partition for the graph and he also used the graph. So the graph here I explained now, if you look at this graph, it is the same with the code that I explained before. In the graph, you can make the vertex. So the vertex means for every of the ads, we can have the origin destination. Or for an ads, yeah, we can define what is U and what is P. So we insert the vertex and then we insert the X. If you still remember, uh, we use the airport at the figure 14, 14 in, in the graph section. So I will use this one. So let's create the graph. Okay. And then we can append the chapter 14. Okay, in the chapter 14, the chapter 14 that I put here, there are some functions. For example, the shortest path three, shortest path line. Okay. So you can adopt this one. In this case, the the author use the term like cloud. Okay. And this is the text algorithm. And he made this one using the tip. So if I want to find the sharpest path from LAX from anywhere, so it will show all the width from LAX to Boston. And then it shows also the possible path from LAX to any other airport. So if I want to know what is the short path here, so from LAX, we can get the shortest path length. So this is 2704. This is the shortest path to the first airport. This is the shortest path to the second airport and so on. Yeah, I give you the dictionary. Yeah, you can look at this dictionary to check. Okay. So if it is, yeah, you can open this one later. You can find what is the value for the LAX to Boston, LAX to order, OHAR, and LAX to GFK, and so on. So if we want to start from the DFW, okay. so this is the result. This is the algorithm of Floyd Warshall. Yeah, you can also apply. If we use the Floyd Warshall, then yeah, there are seven vertices and the number of edges is 13, and the number of edges in the closer is 20. For the other sources, yeah, I use another sources. Uh, you can use any other sources. 
so I don't mind if you want to use from GitHub, if you do not want to use from the author, no problem, but please make sure that you can, uh, you mention the link. For example, yeah, I use this graph. So I mentioned that this is the demonstra given by this author. So I can know the origin of the book and I would like to see if the book is correct. So you can look at this one. I just use the code to check what is the short effect using the dextra. And then this is graph. And then I can also make this graph. Okay, because the time limitation, maybe I'll explain this one from next week. Okay. Any question or comment? Please welcome. Thank you very much for your attendance.